Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Architects 3DP. This is the ninth episode of the Build the Best DIY 3D Printer series. During the last videos we have been building separately the X, Y and Z axis. In today's video we are going to assemble all of them together completing the structure of the printer and at the end of the video we'll have this nice result. Now I'm going to show you the components that we'll need to build this part of the printer. But before starting, be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. If you do it, you will help me creating new content and growing the channel to reach more special viewers like you. Alright, so the first part that we'll need to start with the build of this episode are the next. The Z-axis assembly we built in the last episode, the X-axis assembly that we built in the episode 7, also the two 3D printed Z-axis top parts, and finally, four 18mm M3 screws and the four M3 NN nylock nuts. So starting with the installation, we'll first put the Z-axis in vertical like so, and we're going to insert the X-axis assembly from the top. For that, we'll align the LM8 UU linear bearings with the 8mm smooth rods and introduce them in place very carefully, until the copper nuts touches the top of the T8 threaded rod. Then we'll screw the threaded rods with our fingers until the distance on top exceeds 5 or 6 cm and now we'll install the 3D printed Z-axis top parts. We'll introduce them from the top like so and align the holes on the frame with the holes on the 3D printed component. Once done, we'll insert the 18mm M3 screws from the front to the back, helping us with a screwdriver. Finally, we'll place the M3 and N nylock nuts in the back, using for example a pair of pliers, and we'll tighten the screw, keeping everything stiff and stable. As always, once we have one side ready, we are going to repeat the exact same process in the other side, completing with this the Z-axis movement of the 3D printer. The next step will be to add to the assembly the Y-axis that we built in the first episodes and I have right here. So we'll grab the Z-axis and put it in this position. The motor of the X-axis should be facing the motor of the Y-axis. Then we'll insert the 6mm aluminum frame in between the two M10W washers we installed in the first episode like so. And finally we'll use some wrenches or a pair of pliers to tighten it in place. You have to make sure that the Y and X axis are perfectly perpendicular and aligned. And after a couple minutes we'll have the complete build robust and stiff. Now I'm gonna let you with a couple cool shots of what we have built until now. Now we're going to continue with the installation of the cables for the electronics and the cable management. For that we'll start with the cables on the Z-axis stepper motors. As we oriented the cables to the center, now it will be easy to connect. And at the same time the cables will keep hidden under the aluminum frame. Later we will run them through these couple lower gaps and pass them through the bag of the aluminum frame. In the next episode we'll have to connect all the cables as well as the components we already installed. Like for example the X end stop here in the three pins that it has on the back. Finally, I'm going to test that the Z-axis is moving properly by moving up and down the X-axis, rotating the threaded rods from the flexible couplings with my fingers. Now, as always, I'm going to make a recap of all the components that we used for this build. First, the preassembled axis will need the Z-axis that we built in the 8th episode, the X-axis that we built in the episode number 7, and the Y-axis we finished in the episode number 4. Then, for extra 3D printed pieces, we'll need the two Z-axis top parts. And finally the regular hardware that will be 4x18mm M3 screws and 4x M3NN nylock nuts. Ok guys, so that has been everything for this short video. If you are going to buy the components for this episode, you should know that we will need 5 NEMA 17 stepper motor for the complete build of the printer. So it will be cheaper if you buy a pack of 5 on Amazon. Remember that down below in the description of the video, you will find all the links to download the modified STL files that we needed for this video as well as the links to buy all the necessary components from Amazon through our affiliate links. If you still don't have a 3D printer to print all the 3D printer parts yourself, you can contact me by email at architects3dp at gmail.com and I will try to find you a solution. We have completed the build of the X, Y and Z axis separately, and in the next episode we are going to assemble all three together, finishing the complete structure of our 3D printer. 
In the next video, we'll start assembling the extruder with all its components. So be sure to subscribe and to ring that bell to be notified when cool stuff is uploaded. Hit the like button if you liked the video, leave a comment and share this episode so more people will be able to learn with the project. Finally, I just wanted to give a special thanks to all of you, and especially to our Patreon supporters for continuing to make this channel possible. If you want to join them and support the channel as well, getting nice rewards and making me super happy, you can do it navigating to patreon.com slash architects through the beep or clicking here in the top right corner. Okay guys, so as always, see you in the next video.